German word for thirst, right? Yeah, well, the uh, dorsi. The and they're very thirsty because it's a no dorsi. Thirsty. That is very deep. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. If you can. Uh, so it's take two of uh, Pacific Green Party meeting tonight. It's uh, Cascadia chapter. And uh, I have my pie and coffee. And our honorable speaker, Michael Mayo, has a statement again on January 9th, uh, 2014. Hello and good evening. I'm talking to you. Tonight, about why the Green Party is the only party nowadays that has a sensible case on religion and the spiritual life. It is in common with the Republicans and the Democrats that they mouth slogans they don't believe in. God is going to do this for us. God is with us when we when we bomb some poor innocent wedding party. God is this, God is that. And they don't even go to church. Or maybe they do. You remember uh, we had a Democrat, uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. He used to go to church. And he had a mistress. And every, <laughs> every weekend, some of them he brought to the White House with him. You do remember that one of them was Marilyn Monroe, and she and she came to the White House nearly naked for his birthday party. That's our boy. That's that's the typical politician's take on religion. They say how wonderful it is, and then they have no idea what the hell they're talking about. No, I want to talk about instead of saying uh, uh, mouthing a lot of slogans about religion, I want to talk about just how thin. The, the basis, the fundamental, logical, philosophic basis for atheism is. And I want to do that by uh, bringing a show and tell to the audience tonight. This is a book that, uh, uh, it dates from 1908, but it's uh, uh, produced in the manner, looks like a 17th century book. It has this unbleached leather on the end and unmarked uh, cardboard is the, is the cover. And that's what 17th century books look like. No, when you go to 18th and 19th century books, well, take my word for it, they're <laughs> nicer leather, tool, uh, gilt pages. and broke them apart into little pieces and said that there was a, <laughs> you may recall, uh, if you don't, I'll tell you, that there was a, uh, a krella, that is to say a source for, uh, for uh, all the three synoptic gospels, that there was a uh, uh, Adonai's uh, text of all the Old Testament and a, and a Jehovah text of the Old Testament. The two were put together sometime after the Jews returned from from the Babylonian exile, and on and on. So our boy, Wilhelm Meinhold, he was writing in a romantic era. The book he, and the one book that he ever, that he ever produced, this brilliant fellow, was the uh, Bernstein Hexe, that is to say the witch trial of Maria von Schweigler. How do I know that he's romantic? Well, Meinhold said, not that he wrote the book, no. no Meinhold said that it was a book written by Pastor Schweiger, the father of the condemned witch. It was written in the 17th century. And he, little old Wilhelm, he just found the manuscript. That's a quote. That's what they, that's what all them, <laughs> all them romantic uh, novelists do. If you read uh, Hawthorne, as I would suggest you might, <laughs> Hawthorne is telling you frequently that he found this old manuscript in some in some uh, corner somewhere, and and the and the uh, 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 
the example I can give you in Italian. I, I started to read Promessi Sposi, which is everyone says the greatest Italian work. It's it's uh, uh, first five pages. Then the guy goes into great detail uh, near the river on the side of, of uh, away from Lake Como, uh, just where the road takes a little dip. That's where he happened to be, blah, blah, blah. It goes on to some length about where he found the manuscript, which of course is completely false. He wrote the damn thing. So in the same way, that's what uh, Wilhelm Meinhold did. Back in 1843, he produced a forgery. He said that he found this manuscript, all he did was write it, okay? And he said that the manuscript was from 1650, in the middle of, well, what we call now the Thirty Years' War, or at least at the time of the Thirty Years' War. And this, this uh, was undertaken. Why? Why in the heck did he do this? Because angry, irritated, just totally opposed to the critical examination of the Old and New Testaments, Meinhold said that he could produce a document that people would take for real, but that would be a forgery. That you could take old documents like, like the Bible, and you could produce things that were uh, complete nonsense, complete, completely uh, not nonsense now, but completely not what they said they were, and you wouldn't be able to tell. Because with all your philological uh, tools, you still don't really know. You have to, in other words, in order to appreciate the Bible, you have to uh, read the Bible and feel infused in your heart some sense that there's some truth occurring. And not just uh, uh, say that the uh, Ecclesia comes from the, uh, uh, the uh, Neoplatonic school, blah, blah, blah. So what? What happened when he published the book? Well, it was pretty popular, you know. I mean, you got this 100-year-old uh, manuscript by a father of an accused witch. It was pretty popular. People bought it back, back in 1844. As of now, hey, he's forgotten altogether. But then, after it became a bestseller or a seller anyway, after uh, uh, Meinhold came forward and said, "Well, okay, I'll fess up. I wrote it." The people of that, the critics of the day, rejected that because, because all of the, uh, the attributes of 17th century Baltic German, this uh, kind of middle low German, were in the book. He had, he had captured the kind of German of that day and place. And uh, just the fact that his announcement was rejected as false proved his point beyond any possible recall. It is indeed the case that he had produced one of the most successful forgeries of all time. Now I'd like to suggest that that has some bearing on whether or not we have a well-based philosophical system when we accept Darwinism. Of course I accept Darwinism, but it doesn't mean there is no spirits in the world. We have a spiritual bonding among people who are close to one another. We have disappointment, we have despair. People die young when they aren't given a chance to be real human beings and are just given a, a soulless place in the cog machinery of capitalism. That is then what the, the Green Party talks about. We are open to spiritual influences. It may well be that the entire globe is a living organism, Gaia. It may possibly exist that. We're open to the idea. We're not saying that the Bible is the best book we ever read, the way a, a former president liked to say. No, sir. We're saying that there does exist a spiritual dimension to human life. And with that, I will wish you a happy new year and many happy returns. There, I said the same thing twice. Second time. Felt better the first time because I was getting, getting a shake the first time. And I got a second piece of pie over there. <laughs> For you. Good day if you have excellent pie or how hard as you can get out. Yes. Our artist is back. That's awesome.
will document the daily patient and the Oh, I love it. So, so his, his uh, video are uh, open and in and showing you what he It's a Mark Seibold production. You can tell. I haven't had the chance to watch the full video of the last week.